good morning. It's Saturday and welcome to Saba's way of life. You can probably hear the hens in the background. The weather's beautiful today. Well, it certainly is this morning over here in um, the south of the UK. And I want to show you two things today because there's so many things I could talk about. But in the short time I've got, I just want to show you two things today. So the first thing is the peach tree and then the second thing will be how I organise my seeds that I'm going to sow for that particular day. So today's seeds are going to be all root seeds and I'm going to show you how I organise it, organise them before I go out to sow them. Sowing them is the easy part but planning and preparing and organising the seeds and the area you're going to grow them is far more important. So first let's turn around and look at the peach tree. So here we are, if you can see the peach tree here. I'm just trying to give you a good look. Now I pruned this tree about three weeks ago and I want to share something with you, just some basic principles. You can get them all off Google but when you're out there doing it and you're 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 getting the appreciation of why you're pruning in a way you start to build a relationship with your um, plant or your tree or with any area in nature that you're working with so this is a two-year-old three-year-old peach tree which has really grown high and last year gave me too many fruit most of them fell to the floor and uh, I hadn't pruned the, the tree because it was uh, still young so I wanted to give it a chance so that the roots get strong which they are now I'm not going to go to the tree and um, because it'll just spoil the ho holistic view that you have but the first thing I, I do is to clear it up I take off all the crossing branches you can see there that there aren't any crossing branches there might be one or two at the top because I haven't got up to reach it and I might take that off but I take off all the crossing branches and I look at where the main branch is and I try not to um, I try to keep some of the branches that come out down below so that there's fruit down below as well I don't want it to get too big which it is at the moment um, and, and that's after pruning it because it's going to be hard for me to get up there and I don't want to fall down so I've kept one branch down below I have made mistakes but never mind I've kept one branch down below and further up if you look you can see the branches are at 45 or even lateral but 45 degree angles and there's plenty of sun and space um, and for the sun to get in and the air and the breeze so that they can get a lot of air, a lot of sun into their stems and the flowers and the fruit can form well. The other thing I do is if you look at this, it's got three lead um, branches. There should be one main lead branch and I've been looking at this for a while. It's kind of just here and I've been thinking, oh God, which one do I cut off or do I cut any off? When I'm not sure, I just leave it. And then yesterday, lo and behold, um, I saw on YouTube uh, a, a good 15, 20 minute video which explained that when there isn't a lead branch um, or an obvious one, just to conserve the energy, you don't want, I don't want all three here, um, look at any of the lead branches that don't have too many side shoots or the side shoots are not coming out evenly. So if you look at the one nearest to us, the side shoots are coming out quite evenly, you can't tell from the video. But the one behind it, this one, has only got side shoots coming out on the left hand side. So I'm going to cut that off. I'll have to get my brother around with his saw to help me cut that off and I will leave the rest. And equally with all the other branches that are coming out of the main stem, all the side shoots, I'm just making sure that they are even, they're spaced out on each side and any crossing branches I will take off. And let me turn this around. I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but I followed um, a protocol that I've seen on the internet and I've, I've been looking at 
different ways for a long, long time. So you start, kind of get an idea when you do this regularly. So it's, again, it's about doing something regularly and you start to feel more confident in yourself. And I'm not frightened of making mistakes. I'm not going to kill it. The other thing you'll notice about that fruit tree, let me just turn it back, is that I had staked it because I was frightened in the very heavy winds that we had over winter that's going to fall down and realize that that was fine during the windy season but I've got to take it off now because if I stake it the tree is a living thing just like us human beings if you're if you're helping a child walk every day and holding his or her hand he will not develop or she will not develop the ability to walk for herself or himself so in the same vein with the tree I've staked it to help it grow straight and support it well it needs to find its own support it needs to to live with nature it needs to allow the breeze to blow and it holds itself up I did the emergency treatment but now I'm going to take that off um, and that's something I learned yesterday we're learning all the time Right, now I'm going to go to come to these seeds. Let me turn this around. So today is a biodynamic root day. It's a biodynamic root day. And I am going to be sowing root seeds, right? So what I've got here, look how I've organised it. So this is how I do it. The first thing I do is I get my batch of seed. Um, I mean, I've got too many, but if I get my batch of, of, of seed envelopes like this and I look like, for example, this one, this onion Johnson's one, I look on the reverse to say when it should be sown. So for sowing outdoors or for sowing indoors, this is outdoor sowing. Can you see March to April? Some of them are April to May. And at the top, so I can see it, I write April or March to April. On this one, I've put March to May. So in, in a glance, I can see it and it saves me time from to go, you know, saves me time by having to look each time. It's much easier. You can just pick them up. So that's the first thing I do. So I know which ones I'm going to sow and which ones obviously I can't and I'll wait till later. Then what I do is I get little trays, you don't have to get this, I've got these so I use it, but just use something, even a piece of paper. And I take out a few seeds and I put the envelope next to it so I know what's in it, right? So I've got these, these are shallots, so I know I've only got one bag of shallots, so these are shallot seeds. These are beetroot heritage seeds, I've got a few there. And I can plant these, sow these from March to April. So I'm going to stagger it for every root day that we, that comes up. And now the next thing I do is I label them. Now, I'm, I'm not going to label them beetroot and sanguina beetroot because that's just going to take too long to write that. And then I won't be able to use these again. When you're labeling, make sure that you use plastic labels, otherwise they're gonna get eaten up if they're wooden. I've made that mistake and write in black marker. So I just put beetroot one and in my notebook, I will just write down the date and that I've sown beetroot one and beetroot one equals real seed sanguina. See, again, it's a bit like yesterday where I talked about the freezer or the day before. I'm organized, I'm planned and organized so I can then assess and measure the results later and I know what it is we're eating and whether we like it and whether I should order it again. These things are very important, otherwise you are a headless chicken and you don't know what you're doing. Let's have a look at this. I plant uh, so, so many onions because we eat huge amounts of onions in our family. So I've got these Bedfordshire Champion um, onions here and I've taken a few out and I've written onion Eight. It doesn't matter what number I've written. I've just written onion eight so that when I write down today's date and what I've sown and I write down where I've sowed, where I've actually sowed them, where I've put them out, onion eight is the label I put in the ground outside. I'll know immediately that they're Bedfordshire champions because it's all in a notebook. I'll know the date I planted them and I'll 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 know where I've planted them because I'll write that down. So this is very, very important. And, and I just write onion eight. Onion eight equals Bedfordshire champion on that particular date. I don't need to write the date here. I write that in my notebook, right? Just a running, it's a notebook with a running seed sowing um, timetable. Okay, so 
this way you can pull these out and you can use them next year. Onion eight could equal anything. Onion eight could be anything. Any any time that you've so you, you just write that down here and when you put the labels out onion eight refer to your notebook and you know what it is for that particular year so i hope that makes sense it's already been 10 minutes so i'm going to go and get on with the day and leave you to take action and get on with yours that's my seed sowing for today do not forget to look at the notes down below um, that's important and because I add things later on in the day when I think, oh, I must have, I should have told them that and I should have told them this. Um, there are lots of other things I wanted to talk to you about today. A lot of other things about the Quran and God and things I saw um, and I, I, I read about yesterday. But I'll probably save that for tomorrow. Have a lovely Saturday.